Oh, we're live. Hey, everyone. This is John McNaughton. Welcome to my studio. And this is what we call the Patriot Art Show. And uh, I do this every Monday. Uh, I talk about my political paintings and current events. And sometimes we get into a lot more than that. Um, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss anything. I mean, there's just so much that we talk about. And a lot of it is about my artwork. So this is my good friend, Seth. He's the one that it kind of keeps track of this and, and helps me to run it smoothly. So thanks, Seth. Yeah, you're welcome. It, I mean, you need a lot of help to make sure. I do. I need a lot of help because I am not tech savvy at all. Just not no, me. you're a great painter, John. You're a fantastic painter. But man, when it comes to the technical aspects of things, you <laughs> get a little wonky. Yeah, I admit it. You know, this is my domain right here. This is the studio where I work. And, uh, you know, so to be able to talk about everything that I'm doing and what's going on, both in my artwork and current events, I mean, this is this is fun. There's plenty to talk about. And today yes. I wanted to tell you about something that happened to me this last weekend. Uh, a lot of you know that President Trump was giving a big rally in, in Conroe, Texas, uh, you know, some people said there was as many as 85,000 people that tried to go. I don't I don't know for sure how many there was. But um, I want to tell you what happened because I had an opportunity to talk with him one on one. And it was very interesting. And so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. <laughs> so <clears throat> let me tell you, this is a picture of me when I first got down there. I got to back up a little bit and tell you what led to this. Um, that's me getting frisked by the the uh, the Secret Service. <laughs> but um, here, let me let me back up and tell you what happened. Yeah, because this is his friend. His name. This Mike. is important. This is important because John, John, I, I've worked with John for ten years, and he wouldn't tell me what he was doing until <laughs> he's, he's like, "I'm not going to tell you until afterwards, until after it happens, because I don't know if it's going to happen." Well, there's been people wanting to set me up to meet Trump for years now, and it never happened. I mean, here <laughs> I am. I, I paint all these pictures of him, and uh, I love it, you know. And But I've never had an opportunity to meet him and didn't know exactly. I mean, Sean Hannity once told me that Trump really liked the artwork, and I'd hear rumors from other people. But, but you know, I just don't know. So when this opportunity came up, uh, I had to take advantage. I had to go down. And, and let me tell you what it was. I have a good friend. His name's Mike. And uh, he lives in Texas. He actually lives in Conroe, Texas, where they had this event. And he knew, he knew the mayor. And uh, my friend Mike actually owns the original of Crossing the Swamp, the painting. You know, so here, I mean, he was just excited. He says, John, I've got to get you down here. We got to have you meet the president. And uh, I'm like, sounds good to me. So I flew down on Friday and there were so many things that happened. A couple of times I thought, well, this isn't going to work. We're not going to get to meet him. Oh, well, you know, say la vie. I'm going to get back to my studio and paint. This is my domain where I belong anyway. I don't like to travel. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So uh, on Saturday, uh, I drove out with my friend to this place. It was, a, it was a special event. Only about 100 people were attending. And only about uh, maybe 40 people would be able to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the president. And I had that opportunity. So I uh, went there, and it was uh, on, in a really nice waterfront area. This home was, was beautiful. But it was uh, it was crazy. Go to the go to that picture. So when I get there, the place was surrounded by Secret Service. They they had two lines where every person had to be uh, you know carefully checked. They had guard dogs uh, on the waterfront. There was probably seven or eight boats patrolling, you know, to make sure that uh, nobody could get in. It was just a really tightly secured place, and. Uh, uh, go to the next screen. This is the back of the house. And it was beautiful. It was kind of like almost like being at the White House. And uh, there's a lot of people there. Uh, I, got to, I got to meet some interesting people. 
Um, one person I walked up to that was standing by the fireplace by himself. Uh, go to the next next picture. <laughs> you recognize that guy? <laughs> That's yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike Lindell, uh, the my pillow man. So he's standing there. I walked up to him. I said, "Hey." I says, "I know you." And and he looked at me, and I said, uh, "You know, I'm the guy who who uh, paints all the pictures of Trump, and I'm the political artist." Uh, and he's like, "Oh." And I said, yes, Ron Hannity, he's, he, he bought a lot of my artwork. And, and he's like, well, do you have a card? So I gave him my <laughs> card and he gave me his, he gave me his private email and, and uh, he was all excited. And, and I got to tell you, he's exactly in person like he is in the commercials. He's the same guy. He, he's the real thing. Did, yeah, he try to, very... did he try to sell you a pillow while, you, <laughs> while he was talking to you? No, no. But uh, he was great and very patriotic. and. Um, we spoke to a lot of people and very friendly and yeah, he's, he's great. And now, so this is what I thought was interesting was that he, this looks like a staged photo cause you got the mantle and everything, but well, I had you my actually, friend Mike. I said, you actually accosted him. You went, you went and got him. <laughs> yeah. I told my friend, Hey Mike, get a picture of me with uh, Mike Lindell. <laughs> my, my friend's name is Mike too. So he got his picture, he got his camera already. And I just snuck over there and I was like, Hey, you know, and, and talked to him. See, I had him wearing, <laughs> They gave us those hats. So, so there's afraid. Mike Lindell is just wandering around this mansion. He wasn't even wandering. He was just kind of standing there. He just got done <laughs> talking to a couple of people, and he was just standing there. And <laughs> so I walked over. And so you're um, the same height. You're, I thought he was much taller, but you're you're the same height. Well, maybe I am tall. Maybe <laughs> not. No, that's that's <laughs> no. Nice I'm too. standing on my tiptoes. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. So yeah. yeah, I met some other people there. I met the mayor and uh, of Conroe, and uh, mostly they were a lot of business owners and you know people that were willing to fork out the money to meet the president. And uh, I just was able to to um, my my friend was able to make some deals so that I could be there. But um, I you know Kimberly uh, Gold Goldfoil, how do you say her name? The lady from I have no idea, but I can never remember how to say her last name. I, I, that's I, I can't say her last name. <laughs> She's engaged to Trump Jr. Kim, yeah. Kimberly Goldfoil. She was there. And uh anyway, so that was really cool. So let me tell you what led up to it. I'll tell you the story about how I met Trump. Now hold on, so, we we do have are quite a few comments. Uh, they're not questions, but oh. if you guys want to ask questions, you're more than welcome to ask questions. John's going to answer them, but I'm I'm going through these. I'm starring them, and I've got quite a few comments, John. If you want to, if you want to read through some well, of them, that's right nice. Now. You know, I, I appreciate that. It is. It was awesome to meet him. I appreciate that. I, Lori, I, you know, it's been. I've been wanting to meet him for a long time, but it just didn't happen until last Saturday. All right. Here's some. So. Here's some comments for you. We had uh, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> pull them up on the screen for you. Can you see them? Yes, it's about time. Indigo blue. I have a feeling 45 is a fan. Well, you can decide that for yourself after I tell you the story. Yeah, that's a pretty good story. Here's another one. All right, you ready to hear the story? Okay. Well, I'm going through. I can go through these comments for you. you can you, oh. you check them out on the screen there? Okay. Violence for you too. You see it? Yeah, violence for you too. Okay, let's hear it. That's like saying, stop talking and tell the story. <laughs> yeah. Super exciting news. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, I don't know if he saw my drawings. I don't know if he's seen that. Well, he's seen your paintings. Is I think that's yes. The, yeah, yes. the broader. And that's from the story is that we've got that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, have a, we have a comment from David. He says he bought the painting called The Magic. Nice. Yeah, that was a special painting. Yeah. That was a special one. They're all special in their own way. But. Uh, uh, David also said, John's paintings are amazing. I already have a wish list going. Uh, thank you. Oh, and then well, <laughs> I like this one from Powerful Primates. He wrote, John, <laughs> John is the only guy not yeah. to buy a, a pillow from Mike Lindell. On uh, that would have been funny if I pulled my phone out and says, I'm buying one right now. Yeah. Um, Fanny, uh, Fanny wrote, after all this time, meaning... Uh, you hadn't met Trump Trump before. Well, probably uh, the reason is because I'd never really tried. You know, I I I'm not the kind of person that goes banging on people's doors to to try to you know work the business. You know, I, I just paint. I, I have a very simple 
way of marketing myself. I just paint and I share it. I just share it on social media. And uh, over the years, more and more people have started following me. And, you know, that that's what led to me meeting Sean Hannity and, and these other uh, people that are big in, in the conservative movement. They found out about me and they contacted me. And so maybe Trump was waiting for me to contact him. I have no idea. Yeah. But, one uh, of the coolest things is I, I worked with John, uh, you know, way back when uh, he was working on the forgotten man. And that was a big project that we were working on. I was working on the video for that with him, uh, the forgotten man. And I had never heard that expression before. And then later during Trump's inauguration, Trump used that phrase. And I was like, John, <laughs> yeah. you could see that influence of that painting had at least on sean hannity and i know that uh you know uh trump listens to sean hannity and you think wow this is amazing that trump's paintings had that sort of ripple effect to influence politics in that way and and it's amazing that this is the first time that you're actually that you actually met it really trump. is it really is so let's tell the story all right okay. so the next slide is you, you, you gotta you gotta build up to this one. Okay. Well take Mike off the screen there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I get in line and uh Trump was in this kind of a room off to the left. We couldn't see him. There was about seven, I think about seven Secret Service people that were blocking and making sure nobody could get through that wasn't supposed to be there. And uh, people would start going in to talk with them. Um, I mean, there was only about 25 little couple. I mean, there were usually couples. A few of us were by ourselves like me, but 25 couples and they would usher them in the room and they could talk with Trump. Um, and so I get up to the top of the line and uh, the Secret Service guy is just standing right in front of me, blocking my way. And these, these guys look like like they could really kick your butt. I mean, they were. They were tough looking dudes in suits and uh, kind of looked like they'd be Navy SEALs or something like that. And um, anyway, it was my turn and he stepped back and I walked and turned the corner and the Secret Service all moved to let me come through. And Trump was standing there against a black background with the flags and go to the next screen. That was the look on his face <laughs> as he stared at me. And uh, he was, <laughs> you know, I had, I tried to find a picture on the internet that, that showed the look he had when he looked at me because, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't, I don't have the pictures yet from that they took at the event of us together. I'll, I'll post those later. So I turned towards him and he's standing in kind of a bladed position. You know, if any of you have ever gone to a, a gun training, you know, where they have you stand in a bladed position. So it was very intimidating. He's like kind of leaning forward like that. I walked towards him and I said, I said, hello, my name's my name's John McNaughton. I'm the artist. And immediately his expression changed. And he says, he says, oh, and, and his eyes got big and his head went back a little. And he says, I know you. <laughs> and I said, I said, take that picture down. <laughs> I said, well, I've been painting you for the last five years. And he's, and he's like, oh, yes. He says, I know. And we had a really nice conversation. We talked about um, the different paintings, the Forgotten Man. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the Crossing the Swamp painting uh, that he was familiar with. And some other things. Should I talk about that? Um, <laughs> no, I can't. There's some things we can't talk about. Let's just say there's some really cool stuff going on. Okay. We had a great conversation. They took our picture and I started to walk away. I told him, thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate it. I started to walk away. And he, he said, he said, wait a minute, come back here. And I, I turned and came back as as they they had the original of the of the crossing the swamp that my friend had bought and he wanted to talk with me about that original so they this the one of the his handlers was holding up the original and trump and i were standing next to each other and we were kind of leaning into the painting uh go to the next next slide there thanks sally i appreciate that um you got the calendar that's pretty cool <laughs> 
So this was the painting that we were showing him. And uh, I said, Mr. President, this is my original Crossing the Swamp. It's filled with, with lots of meaning and symbols. And I could tell a lot of stories about this picture. And I turned to him and I says, I bet you could tell a lot of stories too. And he says, oh boy, I could. He says, I could. And then he stood up straight and he waved his hands to one of the handlers and he says, I want to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no, oh no. Uh, and I, I said, well, actually, somebody already owns that painting. And <laughs> I could tell he was kind of, <laughs> he was like, what? Well, it's just so weird you had to tell the president, you know, that you he couldn't buy your painting. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. I know. But uh, I don't know. I think there might be some things in the works. However, you know, at that point, the Secret Service was getting really upset because I had gone three times over my allotted time. And they were trying to whisk people in and out of there. The president kept breaking the rules, but he can do that. So but he was extremely <laughs> gracious. Uh, he was just easy to talk with and very, very much uh, positive about the work I've done. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm just tickled that I got to to meet with them and and talk about that that painting. Now, if I had had more time, I would have talked to him about what I'm going to talk to you about right now. I want to go through this crossing the swamp painting and share a few things. I think that you might you might find it interesting. I know he would. Wouldn't it be great if he could watch this uh, YouTube video <laughs> himself? as I talk about this, because this is what I would have said to him if the secret service had allowed it. Now, so, okay. so, so, so wait, wait. So, okay. So this morning you told me about, um, about your meeting with Trump mm -hmm. and you know, he, he, you said he knew you, you talked very briefly about, you know, how, um, he, how he had been introduced to your art in previous you know, previous encounters with your art. Mm -hmm. Could you share that with the, with the audience? Like how, how had he known about your art, you know, from Ben Carson? I think there was another example of how. Uh, I'm not sure how much of this I can share. Um, you know, I know that, you know, Sean Hannity had showed it to him and I know that some of his staffers, uh, oh, you know, somebody asked about the drawings. Now, right. he must have seen him because during the 2016 election, I was selling these these six by six uh, black and white uh, cards that had my sketches of Trump with his quotes on them, and a bunch of his staffers had been purchasing those and passing them around, you know, giving them as gifts and things. So he had to have seen those back way way back then, um, uh, you know, because I've done a lot of that. Uh, so the drawings, I think he's seen some of that, but the paintings, uh, I have to think he's seen. He's seen a lot of them. I don't know how to what degree, but I do know now for sure that he does definitely like the art and there's something in the works. Uh, we'll see how that that comes around. You so. did talk about uh, Ben Carson. Uh, can you share mm -hmm. that that example, that story? Um, I can't share too much of it. Nope. Uh, <laughs> you know, ben Carson is also a fan I'm trying, of guys, work. I'm trying. I'm trying. Ben Carson has a new organization, a nonprofit called the American Cornerstone Institute. And I've donated a lot of my drawings and things for them for fundraising. They're kind of a, a think tank for conservatives like the Heritage Foundation, except for more, even more conservative than that. You know, so I've got to know Dr. Carson. I went to his birthday in Washington, D.C. back in September. It was really neat. That's a whole other story. But uh, yeah, so um, actually one thing that's kind of funny is one of the reasons that I was there is we were having Trump sign the back of the original because uh, I put these white silhouettes on the back of the original uh, at the request of the person who bought it so that he could get the signatures of everybody in the boat. And I told him, I said, your chances of getting all these people to sign it? He says, I don't know. I don't think you're going to get them. Well, he's already got Dr. Carson's signature. And when President Trump went up to sign his name on the back, and this is what I was told by the Secret Service. They said, 
that he said, oh, looks like Ben Carson beat me to it. <laughs> so he signed his name and it's all dated, which uh, is really good for the owner of the original because it just adds a ton of value to the original. I mean, these are historic paintings and uh, they're going to be around a long time. Man. Pretty exciting. All right, John, we've got we got so many comments and questions. Uh, I'm going to just show them to you on the screen. If you could read their names, yeah, read just the put comment. them up, and I'll kind of talk about the painting at the same time. I'll answer questions. And... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, thanks, I thanks, Eileen. Appreciate that. Appreciate. Oh, and your sons. Oh, you like my son's paint? Yeah, my son. He's my son started painting landscapes and uh, selling them. He's now he's a career artist like his dad, but he does landscape paintings, and he sells everything he does. Everything. Uh, and the probably because the prices are really good right now. But if you go to ncmcnaughton.com, you'll know what I'm talking about. He'll be posting some new ones soon, so you'll want to stay on top of that. Okay. Thanks, Grazi. Appreciate that. Oh, if you could, if you could read their name and their comment first, you start are with their so comment. talented. Well, we all have <laughs> our own gifts. We all have our own gifts, don't we? I don't like to like toot my horn. Uh, STE Clipper has the in-person meeting provided inspiration for any new projects? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, yes. Fanny. Yes. Now remember to read the read the comment and the and the name. Does he love your art? Do I have to read those? Yes, yeah. he, I think he does. <laughs> he didn't use those words exactly, but you know. Sally Taylor, I love your drawings. My daughter gave me the calendar for Christmas. I love it. Awesome. Those calendars are really cool. Yeah, that's a good value. You know, you get all those pictures for that, that low price. Uh, Eileen, what an honor for both of you. Well, it was an honor for me. I mean, it was really, there's electricity in that room for sure. I was grateful. Uh, this one from Fanny, she's she's asking for how much was the original that that Mick, that uh, Trump was was suggesting he could buy. Well, that original right now is probably worth over a hundred thousand dollars. It's a it's a famous, pretty famous painting. Um, you know, art uh, trying to to uh, price artwork is a little tricky. It, you know, it's based on the market and how well known the painting is. Uh, that's why some paintings become so valuable after the artist is dead and they've been circulating in the public. Um, you know, kind of like the principle behind NFTs, which is what something I'm big on right now, the non-fungible tokens. You know, at first you, you pay a small amount and in time they increase in value and someday they could be worth a, a whole lot of money. Uh, and so, <clears throat> Yeah, that, that's about what it is. Oh, all these questions. I'm never going to talk about the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hogan, is Trump aware of the McNifties? Uh, he should be, but was that a part of the... No, it was not a part of the conversation. And, uh, you know, we just mostly talked about originals. Um, but I'm sure he will at some point. It is the Trump Legacy Collection. And uh, his legacy is 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 still still in the process. There's uh, that book has not ended yet, so um, it's exciting, and that's what makes it such a neat project with the NFTs. And that we're coming in at such a his, a perfect time when NFTs are just starting to get into the public eye, and uh, Trump is just starting to get involved again since uh, uh, Mr. Joe Biden, you know, stepped into the into the it's White House. As, we'll as Stephen Crowder, Stephen Crowder says, the, the former vice president, he always calls him the former vice president. Former vice president. <laughs> That's all he calls. <laughs> He'll always be the former vice president. We got two, two goofy vice presidents in the White House. Okay. Pam Cross. Yay. So glad you're able to speak with President Trump. I love having a print of yours in my home. Nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, I'm always flattered when I hear that. Uh, Lori said, ask Trump what he would like you to you to paint for him well maybe i did and maybe I <laughs> okay yeah. i'm not saying nothing okay tina bell i'm so glad i bought legacy of hope it will be a lesson for my grands for years to come oh oh tina bell that painting is so special 
that painting is one of my favorites. So thank you for saying that. Um, and then we've got the last uh, questions right here. Okay. Uh, oh, does he love your art? He didn't use that word exactly, but um, I'm, I, I think that he's very much uh, follows my work. Um, it was all positive. Everything was positive. It was a great experience. So, okay, let's talk about this painting. So uh, Trump was standing uh, on my right. We were leaning over and we were looking at the original of this. And I started kind of pointing to some of the figures and I would have liked to have expressed more of my feelings about this. You know, I mean, this is based on a famous painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware, you know, and you've all seen it. It's uh, it had ice in the, in the, in the river and uh, you had all these different people on the boat with George Washington. Uh, and I thought how awesome it would be to do this picture with president Trump crossing the swamp. You know, if you look closely, you see alligators and there's other vermin and they're, you know, they're, they're trying to get across this swamp. And I found out, I didn't realize this at first, but Washington DC used to be a swamp, a literal swamp before they built it. So, you know, you've got that kind of um, ironic parody, if you will, you know, with the, the, the federal Capitol building in the background. And Trump, he's holding up this lantern as he's crossing, you know, the lantern of truth, you know, of, of, uh, of liberty, you know, trying to, to uh, ferret out all the vermin and the, you know, the, the alligators and the, the swamp creatures, you know, and... You know, I use that symbol a lot in the NFTs. You know, anybody who has one where, where Trump's holding a lantern, that's pretty special. He's got the bomber jacket on and he's in that position just like George Washington. Now, just, just, just beneath, let's go to the next slide. Um, no, let's go to the, I want to see the bottom left corner. Yeah, there we go. So down here, this is this would have been fun to talk with Trump about. You see uh, Jeff Sessions, he's sitting there on the boat and he's got his gun down and his flashlight. He doesn't have his flashlight turned on. He's just kind of there, you know, I mean, and, and I think that Trump would have sympathized with that because he was frustrated that, uh, you know, Sessions uh, recused himself from doing anything related to the witch hunt and all the, the, the uh, uh, illegal uh searches that the FBI was doing and all the crazy stuff that was being thrown at Trump and, and he just rec recused himself. And that was very frustrating. So that that's kind of an important sim symbol to have in the picture. Uh, you have uh, oh, the, so the fact that he doesn't have the flashlight on. He doesn't have it on. He's not even trying. He's kind of got that blank stare on his face. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Well, that was yeah. all on purpose. And, and, and I, that and, and really because he recused himself, that set Trump back quite a bit because he didn't have a functioning uh, attorney general on his defense, really. Well, not not in the sense that he was he was you know being giving him a fair shake and going after these people that were doing things that were horrible, you know, and, and illegal. You know, he focused. I mean, I guess to give Sessions a little bit of credit, you know, he focused a lot on trying to handle things at the border and other stuff, but. Um, he could have been a much more uh, effective attorney general. And then you look back, okay, I'll move over to uh, Dr. Ben Carson. You see him and he's got the, uh, uh, the pole. And, you know, when, when this painting first came out, a lot of people on the left made fun of it because they said they're all rowing in different directions <laughs> because all their, you know, the, the sticks that they're using. But these aren't rows. I mean, they're pushing. They're pushing with the sticks and they're fighting off the alligators. You know, and in the original painting, these are the positions that the people were in the original painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware. And so uh, Dr. Carson was always very loyal to uh, President Trump. And those two had a very good friendship. And uh, to this day, they still do. So I, I, I very much appreciate Dr. Carson. He's a great man. Um, and then you have uh, General Mattis. You see him there in the front. And, and they're all wearing these camo hunting clothing. Uh, when I posed my models for this painting, I had to go out and borrow tons of stuff. So a lot of a lot of fun uh, detail 
that's in the picture with the guns and so forth. But there's General Mattis. He's trying to fight off an alligator. And part of me wonders if he was kind of coaxing the alligators to hurry and come in and, and bite somebody. You know, like, come on, come on. I'm waiting for you. I don't know. I don't know about this guy. I was real excited about him when he first came in. You know, he's very popular with the Marines. But, uh, you know, he really stabbed Trump in the back more than once. So not, not a big fan. Uh, and then you, you've got, um, uh, 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 wow, what's her name? She was the, uh, the head of uh, the uh, United Nations. She was uh, the Nikki, ambassador. Nikki Haley. Nikki, Nikki Haley. Haley, right. So she's, a, she's wearing like clothing that I tried to make it, you know, she's wearing an actual woman's coat, but it's hard to tell. Uh, but that's that's Nikki Haley, and she's uh, fighting off the alligator. She's on the front. Uh, let's go to the next next slide. Well, before we do, John, we got yeah. so many great comments. Oh, uh, yeah, put them I'm up. Gonna have to, I'm put gonna have up. to show you so many okay. great comments again. Uh, you know, if you can read the name and the comment. Okay, four one six Bitcoin. What got you painting? When did you first discover your gift? Oh man, so I've been drawing and painting since i was like in grade school i used to always all the time and I, i've always won the contest i was the kid that you know everybody said oh he's the artist and it really took off when i was in high school about my sophomore year when i did my first major painting and i won a, a statewide high school art competition and the governor gave me an award that's when i was a sophomore and um Eventually, I ended up getting a full scholarship to BYU in art. Uh, so I've always I've always been involved in it and a very been a very visual person. But also, I've always not not only with my art, but I've always been this kind of rebel in a way where I I don't like people telling me how it has to be done. So when I get to art school and they're telling me how I have to paint like a you know like abstract art, I I completely rebelled against that. You know and it's funny. Uh, I feel like my non-conventional way of looking at the world has made it easier for me to fight against liberalism, you know, because I, I live in a sea of artists who are 99.9% .9 liberal leftists. and I'm the one conservative, you know, so it's a plain, strange place to be, but I'm used to it. I'm used to being kind of the outlier. So I don't mind. Um, Next question, Nikos Mara, what is your work routine? Do you like to paint in the morning or afternoon? Thank you for being the painter of the coming wildfire. Oh, <laughs> well, thanks. Um, so I wake up in the morning. I walk right into my studio. I look at uh, wh what I did the previous day. I check the news and my emails. I set up my, my shop. And I turn on some music and I just start painting. I just go at it. And I'll paint uh, usually for a few hours before I realize I haven't eaten anything. And then I go eat. And then I get back to work. And then in the evenings, um, if my wife lets me, I do more stuff. If not, I, I, you know, I have to make sure I take care of my family business as well. <laughs> Uh, you know, as an artist, it's like I, my my brain thinks very visually. I'm constantly coming up with ideas. You know, when I hear the news, when I hear what's going on in the world, I think that would make a great painting. Um, and I have a lot of sketches I work on. So, yeah, I'm one of those crazy artists that is constantly trying to express through my medium how I feel. And uh, that's exciting. Um Next question, Eve Brossard. I don't know if I said that right. What are you painting now? Wonderful. Uh, you got to meet the people president. Yeah, he is the people president. That is for sure. He is the true American president. I'm so grateful. So I've got this painting I'm working on right here. And you can see just a little bit right there, kind of blocked in. You can't tell what anything is. It's just really rough. But I can't tell you exactly what it is, only that it has to do with um, our our former vice president Biden. <laughs> this is going to be epic. I mean, when this painting comes out, it's uh, I'm excited. It'll probably be a couple more weeks, two or three weeks, but that's what I'm yeah. working on. Yeah, and that one, uh, that one, when you told me that idea, 
I laughed. I thought it was a fantastic, probably one of the best ideas and very revealing. I'll say that much. Very revealing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, good evening from Verdon, New Mexico. I love your artwork. Thank you. New Mexico. That's a beautiful state. A little bit too many liberals there. We got to take over. We got to get the country back. But I agree. <laughs> it's a beautiful state. Okay. Bob Torres. Love the awesome thought and detail that go into your work. Thank you. There's a lot of thought and a lot of detail. That's for sure. <laughs> Ryan Hogan. I own 16. Whoa. Whoa. 16 of the McNifties. And I encourage all of your viewers here to seriously consider getting involved with the project. Thank you. That's, that's, that's amazing. These McNifties, you know, if those of you that aren't involved in the NFT because you don't understand it, I encourage you to try and understand it. I mean, you can go to McNifty.art and there's people that will walk you through it. And we're, you know, we're trying to build a community of conservatives in the crypto world. And um, now's the best time to get involved. The prices are down. And these these are going to be around a long time. And so go to mcnifty.art. You get, you get on the Discord platform. And there's people there that will walk you through it. And this, this gentleman says he has 16 of them. That's, that's incredible. Um, I know, I think there's one guy that has 20. There might be a few more, but uh, yeah, these are amazing. And um, I think there's some videos where I talk about them here on the, uh, the YouTube channel. So if you're not quite sure and you just want to watch a video, check that out too. Okay, John, uh, John Hogger. John, do you still see yourself as the chronicler of the conservative movement, movement or do you think you're going to stay focused on Trump? You know, um, it's not just Trump. Uh, I started doing these back in 2009, uh, and I was inspired by the election. And what got me first doing uh, political paintings was the day I found out that John McCain got the nomination. And I was very discouraged about that because I didn't think he was a true conservative. And that's what led eventually to my painting, the, um, the One Nation Under God original, which is just on the wall over here. Uh, and so I did, I did that. And then when, um, when, uh, Obama, uh, pushed through the affordable care act and just stomped, stomped all over the constitution, that's, that's when I did the forgotten man painting. So during his administration, I did a lot of Obama pictures. And then when Trump was elected at first, I was, um, hopefully optimistic, uh, but I, I didn't know for sure how good a president he would be. Uh, I did a painting that's right behind me, right there. That's the original. And that one is called uh, You Are Not Forgotten. And it really emphasizes the point of the election is that the people that voted for Trump will not be forgotten. That's, that's, that's why he was in there. And so I was hoping that, uh, that Trump would be everything that, that he campaigned as. And uh, I've just been, been thrilled. And so, um, yeah, I, I do... Uh, greatly admire him as a president. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't worship the man. I worship Jesus Christ. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he's, I, I, he's kind of like, like, uh, um, the right guy for the job. We needed somebody aggressive and, uh, that's what he is. Uh, so right now Biden's the president and I'm doing paintings about Biden. So there you go. Okay, uh, Rabina Lee Robinson, love and prayers from Perth, Australia. Oh, nice. Freedom, keep the faith and trust in God. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, boy, prayers to you in Australia. Uh, everything those people are going through there. I know different parts of the country are not as bad as others, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, prayers to you and your fight for freedom. You know, I'm thinking a lot about what's going on in Canada right now. Well, those, the people are rising up against their government there in a peaceful way. And that's very encouraging. Uh, so maybe something like that can happen in Australia. Oh, man, that's, I'll tell you what. Cool. Uh, I, so I'm a, I'm a fourth Canadian, uh, and my family has been sending me nonstop messages all day today about um, you know, the truckers there and stuff. And we've never liked Trudeau. And just to see this is just, 
the 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 regular everyday person rising up against the swamp in their mm-hmm. own country is incredible. Now we've got a lot hey, of other crazy. comments. Uh, we got a lot of incredible comments. I'm going to keep going through them, but you, you sure. go ahead and keep talking. I'll just about talk. It. You know, yeah. um, go to the next slide, and I'll talk about that between comments. Okay, so here you see uh, Mike Pence and Melania, uh, and uh, you know they're just filling in the positions like in the original painting. Uh, it was so fun to do these and try to capture the look on Melania's face, and uh, you know and you know, Pence, a lot of the people on this boat have really let down the president. You know, it's it's interesting. And I think that when he told me, boy, I could tell you stories too. When he told me that, I bet he could. I would love to hear his stories at some point. I think I will. You can see Ivanka in the bottom right corner, just right down here. And she's looking towards, uh, looking off. You know, a lot of people like to speculate that she might run for president and you know, eight years or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think she has it in her to do something like that someday. Interesting. Okay, Don Peed. Uh, might you be thinking of painting the Freedom Truckers convoy to Ottawa, Canada? Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Hmm. I like well, to stick to American themes usually just because there's I mean, so you could, much you could, to do. You could right. do a truck with a Canadian flag. You know, just on a landscape. Yeah. Just throwing that well, out. I have one idea for painting that's coming this year that I could do a shout out to Canada in, in a way that's really cool. I don't like to give away my ideas right away. You know, I like you to kind of hold on to your hat. So maybe, <laughs> maybe as we get closer to that, I'll say more about it. Yeah. But uh, I really appreciate our brothers and sisters in Canada. <laughs> cool. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so there you have Ma- Mike Pompeo, and he's he's paying attention. He's got his his uh, eyeglasses, his uh, binoculars, and his shotgun. He's ready to blow that those alligators out of the water. Uh, <laughs> you've got Sarah Sanders there; she's steering the boat. Wasn't she great? She was a great press secretary. Liked her a lot. I got to meet her in in D.C. at an, an at an event uh, for Dr. Carson. And I talked to her for a quick second. She's a nice lady, really funny. Um, I think she's running for governor in Arkansas. I, I think she'll probably get it. She's a, she's a sharp lady. What's amazing is she did all that while she had like several kids, and uh, just just crazy. So it was she, she is pleasure. running for governor uh, of is it Alabama? Is it Alabama? I thought it was Arkansas. Is it Alabama? Arkansas. It, you're, Arkansas is correct. Yeah, because okay. her dad was the governor there, correct? Right. Mike Huckabee. Okay, let's see the next picture. All right. So there you have uh, Bolton. First name. Anyway, he was like the Secretary of Defense or one of the defense advisors. Anyway, he was a he stabbed Trump in the back later, and <laughs> yeah. uh, Trump just he's, a, he's a super, super 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 neocon. He just he yeah, was a war major officer. neocon and uh, wanted to go to war with everybody. So I thought I thought he was a great you know that big mustache and kind of in the ready position. Uh, that was a lot of fun putting him in there. Um, had had I mean there's no question he's got the high gaiters on his you see the gaiters he's wearing up on his uh, legs uh, you can see um, Kellyanne Conway she's back there holding her gun she was one of the few that stayed loyal to, to President Trump through the whole thing uh, which is is the whole what's really weird about that was her husband that was the total opposite you know part of the Lincoln project I don't remember his name uh, George Conway. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's just such a paradox between him and her. Uh, and then you have General Kelly. He's kind of steering things. He was this chief of staff for a while and turned out that he wasn't very loyal either. So Trump was literally had alligators in the boat with him uh, and he didn't know it. Um, I think that uh, he should have had Steve Bannon stay a little closer to him. You know, Steve Bannon was was kind of the odd uh, the odd person in the bunch, you know, he was telling Trump one thing while all these other people were telling him to be more like a typical president. Um, 
but that's another story. Okay. Well, what's fascinating to me is that I never, I had never listened uh, to um, Bannon speak ever at all. You know, all I knew about him was what they would show a little image mm -hmm. of him and they always made him look like he was some sort of phantom. Uh, you know, yeah, or he's crazy or, yeah, or, you know, just a madman. He's angry all the time, you know? Yeah. And then I remember I listened to him. He was having a, he was having an interview. He was doing a long form discussion. It was like two hours long and I didn't know who was speaking. And I, I was listening to this person speak and I was like, man, I agree with 99% of what this person is saying. And he is saying it so amazingly well. Like it's, it was like a perfect I heard the same interview. There was an interview. It's like two and a half hours long. I think it was on uh, like NPR or something. They just mm -hmm. let him talk. And Face I the nation. Face the nation. No, no, it was something different. But, okay. but I, I actually, I carefully listened and I agreed with a hundred percent of what he said. And I don't normally, <laughs> I don't even agree with a hundred percent of what Trump yeah. says. Yeah. Um, but you know, there was a liberal leftist article written recently and they said that steve bannon was the most dangerous man in america you know and that's coming from the left mm -hmm. uh i mean the guy is really the reason why trump was elected in many ways uh he really kind of set set the tone and 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 then you know america first and all that uh so really cool um so yeah lately i've been interviewed by bannon quite a bit um and that's partly why I took the time to watch that interview to see if I really did agree with hundred percent of what he was saying. And, you know, maybe I could find something in the past he said that I don't agree with, but because nobody's hundred percent, I mean, but the guy, the guy's spot on. Um, anyway. Uh, so yeah. This painting was just, just awesome to paint, to do. And I, sometimes I hit him out of the park. This one I think was out of the park. Um, I never know, you know, honestly, when I painted this picture, I looked at it and I was like, hey, this turned out pretty good. Uh, I wonder if people will like it very much. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually my reaction. And uh, when this hit the internet, it exploded. And I literally sold out of every limited edition canvas print I had in two days. Well, we'll back up a little bit, kind of, kind of uh, walk through this because um, I, I've always been acquainted with your work for the past, you know, 10, 10, 10, 15 years. I've, I've been mm -hmm. intimately acquainted with your work. I remember when you launched this painting and I wasn't even a part of the, the background of it all. Mm -hmm. You just did it. You launched and like, I could suddenly see traffic on my end because we had worked on videos together. I saw traffic. I was like, what did John just do? <laughs> but you had launched this video kind of compare and contrast, like with previous launches, you know, what was, what was the reception and then contrast it with what happened with crossing the swamp? Because I think that's important for people to understand the impact it was making. And then why, why was that happening? Oh, and then we have a comment from uh, from Leanne, she's asking where can she purchase this painting? Oh, yeah, you can you can purchase any of my pictures on johnmcnaughton.com. Uh, they come in different sizes. And uh, this particular one is only available in a lithograph <clears throat> right now. So that's all Trump can get too. There's no, there's nothing else. Available. <laughs> I hate yeah, Trump tried to buy this painting original from you and you said no. I said no. And I talked to the owner afterwards. And I said, do you know that Trump wanted to buy your painting? He's like, what? And he says, that's so cool. Trump <laughs> envy. <laughs> <laughs> I have Trump envy. You know? yeah, I said, well, how much would you sell it to him for? Not less than $5 million. <laughs> and he yeah, was serious. He or was the, serious. The plane that he uses it, to fly you know, like, It'll probably be worth that much someday. You know, when I'm dead, of course. Um, you know, that's the funny thing. I, you know, I've been very fortunate that my paintings have reached a certain degree of exposure and value this, you know, while I'm still alive, I'm 54 right now. So I figure I've got at least 15 years left in me. Um, some artists can go forever. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I only do about five or six paintings a year. Um, and so there, there's not too many because I don't want to rush them. I spend a lot of time on these, a lot of time in the detail and, that's what makes them special. You know, I figured the other day that by the time I'm gone, I, I figure I might have something like 
150, 160 original political works that that'll be my body of work. And then a lot of sketches and drawings. So that's not very many originals, you know, and that's normal for a lot of artists, unless you're Picasso. I mean, he just whipped them out like 20 a day, but mine are more rare. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do the NFT project because um, this way I can make more originals available. They're different. Um, they're kind of a conglomeration. And so what I mean by that is like, we'll have a collection of say uh, 5,000 NFTs and every single one of those is different in some way or other. And some are more rare than others. So it's kind of like you own an original, except that it's a, a digital. And people that buy NFTs, they compare it to kind of a high-end uh, trading cards in a way. But they can track it so you can't, you can't like just, nobody can steal it from you. You're the one that owns it. It's kind of an interesting thing. I know it still makes no sense to people, but it's worth looking into. Now, okay. now uh, yeah, go into the, before you get distracted with the NFTs, talk about um, the compare and contrast previous paintings you've done. And then this painting and when you released it. Well, I'm not sure what you mean. Contrast other paintings. I mean, every painting is so different. Uh, I've never done a painting. Well, I do a lot of paintings that are parodies of famous American paintings, Americana. You know, this is a very iconic image from a very iconic image of George Washington crossing the Delaware. Um, uh, and so I, I, uh, I've done other ones of iconic images and then some of them are completely like just, just random stuff that I come up with that has a really strong concept that, that helps people to get the message out, you know? And a lot of times when people see my work and this is what's unique about what I do is I, I like to create sort of a, almost a humorous situation, something outrageous that people would be like, well, that would never happen. You know, <laughs> and uh, but then when they look at it closely and they see the meaning, they find that there's a serious undertone that goes through it. And so that's part of what drives the left crazy when they see my work is they uh, the fact that it gets so much attention that it drives them crazy that an artist actually took the time to paint these. Uh, and they know that they know that the message is is being understood by the right. And it, it really upsets them. Uh, and then the people that understand the painting, they usually love them because not only are they fun to look at, but they really focus in on uh, something that's important in, in the American landscape right now, especially to conservatives. And, um, you know, as an artist, I never planned on being a, a political artist. It was never part of my plan. You know, I, I've always just painted things that were important to me as, as a, you know, personally. So when I started doing these political images, no, there was no marketing plan. There was no like 10 years from now, this is what I'll be doing. I just was doing it. And, and I can't believe how popular they've become. It's really, it's remarkable. Oh, here's one, Sandra. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra. I missed, I was about to read your, your thing. Eileen, I had no idea all that went into this painting. Oh yeah. I could talk about this painting forever. Uh, on and on and on, but I won't because here's, here's the Sandra one. Sandra, it really is lots of detail, like Thomas Kincaid's paintings. You know, he, that guy was the the painter of light. He did his thing with cottages, and um, you know, and uh, he built his brand around that. Uh, you know, he had more of a traditional approach to painting, kind of like me. Uh, but uh, my focus is in political imagery. And so it, it kind of takes a different deviated course than what he was doing. His paintings are more like, uh, like a, a relaxing, uh, you know, laying, laying in a relaxing uh, setting with flowers and fresh air. And mine is more like, like, uh, you know, a roller coaster ride at Disneyland. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not a Disneyland. Disneyland. Like, a, like an apocalyptic setting in Washington. Seven flags. <laughs> I don't know. Like, hold on to your hat. That's I yeah. Guess. Hold on. Yeah, hold on to your mega hat. We're, we're hold going your mega hat. Oh, I got a great mega hat at the 
at the this event. They gave me a free one. Yeah, anyway, they're not the red ones orders. anymore. They're black, aren't they? Well, this one was uh, the words are bigger, and then it has forty five on one side and the American flag on the other, and that thing was sharp. Okay. Uh, here, great paintings, love them. Thanks, Cindy. Appreciate that. Okay, Linda, your work is so amazing. Everyone tells a story with so much feeling. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, it's I just I just I do put a lot of feeling into them, a lot of thought, and uh, so I always figure if I can please myself with these paintings, that there'll be people that'll respond the same way. So you must be a kindred spirit. Um, Kimberly, do you offer classes? I used to teach. I taught painting for 12 years. Uh, and I had, uh, my apprentices, I was helping them and, um, you know, mostly teaching landscape paintings. Cause I started out as a landscape painter. I had a gallery for 12 years that sold my, right. My own gallery that sold nothing but McNaughton paintings. And that's when, towards the end of that is when I started doing political and Boy, when I started doing political, I couldn't get any work done because people kept coming in and like, so what do you think of Obama? What do you think? And I was like, oh, well, OK, I got to put my brush down now. <laughs> so it was a good thing that I closed that gallery. Now everything's online and it's way better. I don't have to deal with that. But OK, Mike, keep up the great work, John. Millions of Americans appreciate your efforts and support patriots like you. Thank you. Mega Trump 2024. Thank you so much. Uh, we're all doing all we can. Um, uh, Laura Lorton, love all your work. How long does it usually take you to paint from start to finish? Awesome. You got to talk with President Trump. I just, I trust there's a bigger plan in the works and you'll be painting America's victory one soon. God bless. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you. Um, it takes me uh, anywhere from one to two months to do a painting. And uh, sometimes it takes over a year at, to process it. Um, you know, some of the paintings, for example, that crossing the swamp, I had the idea for about a year and a half before I actually got around to painting it. So that's a lot of time to let it gel and figure out how you want to do it. Uh, and I got paintings this year that I'm doing that are the same that I've been thinking about for a long time. This is going 2022 is going to be an epic year. <laughs> the paintings, I mean, everything, what's going on politically in the country, what Trump's doing, uh, the paintings I have planned, the NFT project. Uh, it's going to be an amazing year. It's going to be a roller coaster. Six flags. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. You've you've shared with me uh, the ideas for many of your projects. And I, I, I don't think you've ever had a more ambitious schedule uh, in oh, front yeah. of you and that, that was before you had told me about the you meeting with president trump and the potential yeah. uh the potential things that might come from that yeah i don't know what kind of zingers trump's gonna throw my way so i mean who knows who knows uh and, and wish in i fact, could tell you all everything i'll, I'll but... say i'll say to the people watching this there's a difference john i've noticed there's a difference between you know, artwork with, that you kind of know is uh, a, a bit comical in a way where you're, you know, you're, you're painting relatively quickly because you're, you're, you're making a comedic point about, you know, almost satire. Uh, like about a political, political cartoon. Landscape. Yeah. Like you did that uh, trick or treat one, uh, you know, and it's a little bit more comical. So you're, you're painting relatively quickly. Right. Uh, but then when you when you're set on a painting and you take your time with it, th those ones take you two months. I've seen you go through all of the stages and how long you work on it and how the like, detail and the lighting and then you have to photograph people. I mean, it just the mm. the amount of time you take to to do those details is is pretty astounding. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but anything good takes a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't and with that. Is with that in mind, you actually got a comment here about uh, about someone wanting to see something in advance. Okay, uh, put me big on the screen. Okay, see this little corner here? That's your sneak peek. <laughs> That's all you're getting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is rough, so I haven't painted the detail yet. So I'm sorry that doesn't probably <laughs> fill your bucket, but 
I can't well, give it away. I can't. Well, I can't, but I'm the, gonna shock the, irony, the world. I'm going to shock the world when it's done. The irony <laughs> is, is that if you know what the painting's about, you could almost guess it just by that sneak peek. Yeah, but see, I'm the only one that can see it in my head. <laughs> I know exactly. And that's the thing. Every painting I do, I can see it finished before I paint it. All I have to do is recreate what I see in my mind on the board. And that's the fun part is watching it just come alive. And so I could describe it to you. I mean, in fact, I've, I've described paintings I'm working on to people. Like when I did the Magnificent Seven, the guy that ended up buying the original of that, I, I described the painting to him. He wanted to know. And I told him what it was. And he's like, yeah, I probably won't get that one. I'm like, that's cool. I don't care. I, I, I don't. I just paint him. And as soon as he saw it, he freaked out and had to have it. <laughs> you know it's, uh, people are funny you know it, they i don't know people people try to imagine in their minds what they think it will be and when they see it it's you know and you know the way i way i know if a painting is successful is if after you see it you can never forget it it becomes in, emblazoned in your brain <laughs> you know that means it's iconic you know, you can never forget the Mona Lisa. You know, you may hate the Mona Lisa painting, but once you see it, you never forget it. That's why it's so iconic. That's why it's such a famous painting and so valuable. So that's what I'm trying to do with a lot of these. All right, we got another what kind of music here? do you listen to when you paint? Oh, that's from X4 dot, dot, dot. Well, man, I listen to a lot. I listen to the Beatles. I listen to country. I listen to, I mean, oh gosh, I don't want to tell you some of the ones I listen to. It'd be embarrassing. Um, I, li I listen to a lot of old 80s rock and roll. Um, I, I, I listen to a lot of stuff. I mean, sometimes I'll listen to instrumental. Just depends on my mood. Um, when I listen to Trump, it's either, it's either some uh, like... Um, Oh, kind of some modern country or some hard rock and roll. <laughs> well, so, we did that. Remember, we did that video on uh, the Magnificent Seven, and we were planning out like this. Oh, we're going to talk about it and stuff. And then that playlist song on your yeah. whatever you're listening to, it was uh, Blake Shelton, Blake God's Shelton. Country. Yeah, I, I was listening <laughs> to that song. I was like, that's a cool song. That goes yeah. perfect with this painting. <laughs> You know, we did. And so we put it on there and uh, that, that was fun trying to find the right music to go with it. Uh, All right. We got so many comments, John. I'm going to try to get through these as quick as okay. I can. Is there a follow up to the masterpiece? If yes, when a lot of much, you know, if I do a follow up to that, it might be after Trump wins the 2024 election. And then I'll reveal what is happening behind the curtain. So, <laughs> yeah. Lisa Kolar. Yes, if you need help getting a McNifty, they will walk you through the process. Okay, we got a NFT McNifty fan. I call them McNifties because it's McNaughton and NFTs. Bring the two together. And that's a McNifty. <laughs> it's fun. Okay uh fanny last question sorry for the spam but as an artist mainly mixed media i've never been to college or taught any skills any advice i'm a god-fearing patriot as i do patriotic art but sometimes i surrender into thinking i'm not skilled enough your skills and talent is truly jaw-dropping well thank you um you know art school is overrated uh you go to art school and usually don't get your money's worth. Uh, the best thing to do if you really want to learn is to find artists that offer workshops that do work that you like. Not necessarily subject matter, but they're what they paint, how they paint, whether it's realistic or abstract or what have you. I have nothing against abstract art. I like ab some abstract art, but that's not the way I wanted to paint. So I had to learn on my own. Uh, so I went to libraries. We didn't have the internet much back then. So I had to go to the, to the BYU library and make copies of old books and study and then just figure it out. You know, I've been painting for, 
uh, 30, 40 years now, 40 years. I've been painting 40 years and it's been a process of learning. Um, at this point, I don't worry about technique and media. I mean, I'm just interested in creating that visual that represents what's up here. And that's where you, that's where you want to get to. That's where you want to be Fanny. So, um, you know, at this point I would just find somebody who can teach you in a workshop. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of those out there. A lot of good stuff. Day, Day Janie, you capture their likenesses so precisely, which is incredible. Do you find it hard to do backgrounds versus people? And do you use photos or memory when drawing famous people like Trump? Now, that's a good question. Um, landscapes are way more easier than people. <laughs> I did landscape painting in my gallery for about 10 years, I think. And and it was so relaxing in those days. I just go in and, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult people. Uh, it takes as long to do one face as it does to do a whole landscape painting. I, you know, it's, it takes a long time. You got to get it just right. You have one stroke out of place and the whole painting falls apart. You know, if you have one stroke on JFK's face wrong, he looks so weird. So, yeah, it's a challenge. And the average figure, the face on one of my figures, the average one is about an inch. So I got an inch to, to paint the eyes, the mouth, all these things. Um, I'm not a, a, I mean, some of you may th say, well, he's a photorealist. I'm not really a photorealist. I, I, I painted just real enough and then I stop. So my, my work has a little bit of a, of a, I wouldn't say impressionistic, but a little bit looser, looser feel. So yeah, it's more difficult. Uh, charity, do you have dreams and then paint what is in your dream? Wow. You guys ask good questions. <laughs> okay. The first painting, political painting I ever did was based on uh, a dream I had in my mind while I was awake. I guess that's a vision. <laughs> and I don't like to use that word because it implies that, that, you know, somehow I've, you know, got the hand of God upon me. And I don't want to be so presumptuous in my art to think that every painting has the hand of God. But that particular picture... The One Nation Under God. It's on my wall right there. Let me turn it so you can see it. You see that? That's the original. It's quite large. So that painting came to me um, the day that I found out that uh, John McCain had the nomination. And a little sneak peek there. And uh, I said a prayer. I said, Lord, what can I do? I'm just an artist. And I looked in the direction of my easel, and I saw that finished painting, the whole thing. And it was in my mind like an epiphany, you know. And I looked at it, stared at it, I, and I, I kind of closed my eyes, and it was gone. So I grabbed a piece of paper, and I sketched out what I saw, every detail. And I used that as my guide to create that painting. That was my very first political painting. And to this day, it's my most controversial. The concept that the, the, that the Constitution is divinely inspired. So I do occasionally have dreams and things that influence what I'm doing. Um, and sometimes I have these epiphanies that come to my mind. And I'm a very visual person, so it's easy for me to, to do that. And yeah, so dreams, that makes a difference certainly does. Okay. Douglas, a bit surreal to see you live. It's a little surreal to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I own a couple signed pieces of your work along with your table book calendars. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks, Douglas. All right. We have just a couple more comments and then I think we'll wrap it up because this has been, hey, there's a lot. It's been a while. This is the most comments we've ever gotten, John. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, Dan Rosalie Sawyer, we love your paintings. Blessings to you, sir. Thank you. I need all the blessings I can get. Gracie Marie, thanks for sharing. Way cool. To be a fly on the wall, glad you had this experience and spent time with the president. 
Love your paintings and hope there's a Save America inspiration in the works. Or when the truckers go coast to coast in the U.S., God bless. Thank you. You know, when Trump gave a small speech to the few people that were at that house when I went to meet him, he said something I hadn't heard him say before. He says, we're going to make America great again, again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. Uh, G, is that GL Gallic? I purchased a painting print of all President Trump. J.I., J.I. J.I., okay. I purchased a painting print of all President Trump and all the past presidents standing armed with guns. Why? Because it brought tears to my eyes when I saw it. So again, you know, it's a parody. And the reason I chose those seven presidents is because I believe that they stood up to the establishment. And they're just some of my favorites. And so to have them wearing modern tactical gear with M16 or an AR-15... Trump standing on the snake represents our, you know, the enemies of the Republic. You know, I thought it was a powerful image. You know, the Magnificent Seven It's just one of those paintings that just kind of like, yeah, you know, that's how I feel. Uh, so that's really what it was. You know, anytime you look at a patriotic painting and you think about what a horrible mess our country's in, it does bring tears to your eyes. It, it does to mine. There's, I have my moments where I'm just like, man, I just wish... I wish I could do more. You know, everybody has their gift. You know, you got people, you know, like Rush Limbaugh, they could just talk and, and break it down. Um, they have a, the gift of words. I, I, my gift is painting. And each of you have your own circle of influence so we can do what we can to make a difference. But thank you. So, oh, got another one. Uh, love your paintings. This is Leanne Laguerre. Uh, Amber down the line, you'll paint our favorite president doing his rallies. Title would be The Great Awakening. Cool idea. Yeah, a, yeah I think maybe down the line is what I think. Uh, maybe down the line you'll Down paint. the line, yeah. You know, anything's on the table. I just want to leave a legacy of art that reflects our history, our time in history, and that'll be for everybody. Um, you know, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. This was a long one. Talked about a lot of things. You had a lot of good questions. You know, it's really a pleasure for me to be able to talk here in my studio. I feel comfortable in my surroundings. And, um, you know, I asked Seth, do I have to look right at the camera when I'm talking? And he says, that nah, doesn't matter. That's good. Because I don't want to. I just want to <laughs> relax. I just want to relax and just let the words come out. So um, we're going to be doing this show every Monday night. And we're going to talk about current events. Uh, Seth and I will kind of beat beat the beat around the the um, the, the, the news and what's going on. Uh, there's crazy stuff going on in Canada right now with the trucks. Um, crazy stuff in the going on in the world, and lots to talk about. So if you want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, join us next week or listen to the listen to the recording of it and you can enjoy this. Uh, again, I appreciate your time. Good night and we'll talk to you later.